there are a few things that we are going to have to do and our peer organizations are going to have to do to continue to add value and to be relevant. Mm -hmm. um, at the top of that list is the quality of the solutions and the technical programs. So we've got to ensure that when we're designing and implementing programs that the, the technical quality in terms of the science that we're bringing to bear or in terms of the methodologies and the approaches that we're bringing to bear are state of the art. Mm -hmm. Second, we need to make sure that the management of those programs is efficient and effective. And the, the environments we're working in are becoming increasingly sophisticated, uh, regulation, increasingly regulated, and, and um, from a, just a pure management point of view of personnel management and uh, you know, setting up organizations, managing property, mm -hmm. Um, more challenging. So there's technical quality, there's efficient management that will result in cost-effective solutions. So I think that all organizations uh, working in human development have got to put a lot more emphasis and thought into how do you become cost-effective. Mm -hmm. And to, to really be challenging themselves on what is the what is the the most cost effective way of accomplishing a given objective and then that often will mean not doing things in the same way that, that they've been done in the past right so that requires innovation and oftentimes when we talk about innovation in the development sphere what we're talking about is technical innovation innovation around mobile money or you right. know applying technology or right. innovation around new health approaches mm -hmm. could be a methodology for communication um, or, or uh, changing behavior but there's also innovation that we're going to have to embrace to find to to come up with to create mm -hmm. uh, around um, around organizational management and the business model for delivering services right and um, that that kind of innovation of the business model so that we're more cost effective so that we're more responsive to the to the clients or and that could be the funders it could be the counterparts you're working with it could be the beneficiaries who are participating in the program so for organizations like ours, when you put it in business terms, and I think we need to, we need to recognize we're working in a competitive, um, sophisticated uh, environment that, and it's an environment of a global enterprise. Um, one of the differences between us and a, and a uh, commercial business is that our customers are not just the person who's buying our services. For us, that particular term doesn't translate that completely. Right. Customers. Because, you mean. Customers, yeah. yes. Because it includes both your funder, and a lot of times that's when people think about their customers, they're thinking about their funders. But right. it also includes the counterparts that you're working with. And in our business, a, a major focus is on... Um, capacity building, both institutional capacity building and, and individual capacity building. Mm -hmm. So it's the counterparts that you're working in partnership with, and it's the beneficiary of the programs. Right. 